video we'll talk about the uh, Fourier series representation of LTS systems and uh, we're going to see how a very special class of signals can be represent represented by Fourier series okay and uh, to understand this representation uh, and this special class of signal you will see are, are periodic in nature and uh, and we're we are going to try to express them in terms of exponentials okay just like uh, before we tried to express the, uh, we have seen that uh, any discrete time signal or a continuous time signal can be expressed in terms of unit impulses so given that x of n of, of or, or any discrete time arbitrary sequence which can be decomposed into uh, unit discrete time impulses uh, if this impulse is applied to an LTI system, x of n is applied to an LTI system, the output is given by the convolution sum. That is, uh, you have to superimpose, you have to add the, the output is the uh, superposition of all such impulse responses, okay, which are being scaled by the samples of uh, x of n. So uh, a very, very similar explanation exists uh, if uh, you consider an exponential, complex exponentials how uh, uh, the LTI systems, they response to, uh, uh, respond to complex exponentials. So, so to, to, to understand the Fourier series representation of uh, periodic signals and how the periodic signals can be decomposed into uh, complex exponentials in, 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 a, in a very similar manner, how uh, a discrete time sequence or a continuous time signal can be uh, decomposed into pulses. Uh, in a very similar manner, we are going to show Fourier series can be used to represent the periodic signals in terms of complex exponentials. So let, let, let's have first uh, have a look at the response of, of an LTI system to complex exponentials. So what happens is that, okay, now uh, the importance of complex exponentials in the study of LTI system stems from the fact that the response of an LTI system to a complex exponential input is the same complex exponential only with the change in amplitude okay so what it means is suppose you have a continuous time signal okay you consider a continuous time signal and to the continuous time sorry continuous time system you apply a complex exponential est s is a complex variable okay in general it's, it's a complex variable uh the output the output to such an input of a continuous time system will be uh will be of the same form as the input you see the the output will also consist of the same uh, input a e of st being multiplied by a complex constant which is a function of s it's not a function of t it's so this is a complex amplitude so h of s forms the complex amplitude and this is referred to as the eigenvalue of the system so e of st is the eigenfunction eigenfunctions are those functions which when applied to a particular to a special class of systems known as lti systems now to, to such systems if you apply an exponential the output is of the same form as the input okay the difference is between the input and output is that you have a complex uh, multiplication factor or the amplitude factor uh, which is a function of the complex variable s right so other than that the output is the same the output is the same the the, the form of the output is the same as the input but there is just an amplitude multiplying factor which is complex in nature because s is a complex uh, variable so therefore the function of s is also a complex uh, function itself right so similarly the same analogy can be drawn in the discrete time case suppose that you have a complex uh, exponential sequence where n is a discrete time index g of n which when applied to a discrete time lts system will produce an output will produce an output hz which is complex multiplied by the same input g of n okay so the output comes as the same as the input the output is the same the output is same uh, as, as the input the difference is just uh, is the addition of a multiplication factor which is which is of complex nature okay uh, whose uh, which takes which takes the complex values as, as the input okay so the amplitude is a constant but it's complex so the complex amplitude factors hs or hz will in general be a function of the complex variables s or z now a signal for which the system output is possibly complex times constant times the input is referred to as the eigenfunction of the system so for example over here est and z of n are the eigenfunctions of the system why because 
when applied to the system and applied to an LTI system, the output, the output is the same as the input, which is EST or Z of N in continuous or discrete time domains. Uh, so these, if if a certain class of input in this case, which is exponential, when applied to an LTI system, is the same as the the output is the same as the input, then we call this as an eigenfunction. So those those inputs are called the eigenfunctions of the system, and the amplitudes, on the other hand, H of S and H Z which are complex amplitude multiplying factors are known as the eigen systems eigenvalues okay so uh, to to see this well you know that uh, uh, the lts systems can be represented by a convolution the output can be represented by the convolution sum as over here for a continuous time system if you have the impulse response well you can uh, represent the response of an lts system in, come on, in terms of the convolution integral and if uh, xt is est okay xt is EXT, which is the eigenfunction, which is being applied to these, uh, such a system, uh, LTI system. You see, then from the convolution integral, you can write this uh, as E of S T minus tau. Uh, the variable of integration is tau over here. And integrand, uh, well, you can write this uh, integrand. Uh, you can express the entire integrand in terms of the function, uh, the, the, the variable tau, okay, the, the integration variable is tau, and then there are limits. Uh, since the, it's, it's not a, uh, integration without limits, so you, you won't have any constants, and the evaluation will be when you put, put the limits of tau that you will have the variable tau is going to vanish, and then you will have a function of h of s. So h of s is basically uh, this integral, this integral. Okay, this integral forms the uh, complex function, and then you can see that since the integration variable is tau, you can take est out. Okay, so this is es t minus tau over here. This was the input. So you for this input, which comes over here. Okay. And then you are going to take uh, EST out of this uh, entire integration. Okay, integration is over tau. So this uh, multiplying factor becomes H of S. Okay, and you will see later on that this is the uh, this is how the Laplace transform is uh, is defined. Okay, in terms of the complex variable S. S happens to be the complex variable which has both real parts and imaginary parts to it. So, but anyways, uh, this integration is going to result, is, this won't be a time function, it would be the function of some complex variable s. But the important thing to see from here is that for an LTS system, for which, whose response can be shown, uh, whose response can be represented in terms of the convolution integral, if such an input xt of a complex uh, exponential nature is applied, the output is of the same form, est multiplied by <coughs> uh, an amplitude factor that is complex a function of s, okay. So H is a complex constant whose value depends on S and uh, which is related to the system impulse response as given as such, okay? So hence we have shown that the complex exponential are again the eigenfunctions of the LTS system and the all constant H of S for a specific value of S is then the eigenvalue associated with the eigenfunction, EST, okay? Similarly, uh, in, exactly, uh, in an exactly parallel manner, we can show that the complex exponential sequences are eigenfunction of discrete time LTS systems. That is, suppose that an LTS system with an impulse response H of n um, has its input sequence, uh, X of n is Z minus n. So the impulse response is H of n, then the output can be again represented by in terms of the convolution sum, okay? So in X n minus k, you substitute it for Z minus n, which will be Z of n minus k. The summation is over k, so you can take Z of n out of the summation, okay? Then the result of this summation will be in terms of z, purely in uh, in z, the complex variable z, okay? Uh, so uh, again, you see that hz becomes the eigenvalue of the system and uh, zn is the eigenfunction of the system. So assuming that the summation on the right-hand side converges, the output is the same as the complex exponential, as the complex exponential um, multiplied by, so the, this, this z of n is the complex exponential which we applied in the first case. So you see the output is again in the same form as the input, x of n, okay? So this is an eigenfunction. So this is being multiplied by a constant that depends on the value of z. And uh, this z is, 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 uh, is a complex amplitude multiplying factor. And x z is given uh, by the summation, which we will see later on. This is becomes the definition of the z transforms which are exactly the uh, discrete version of Laplace transforms uh, given in the variable S. S is a continuous time variable, whereas Z is a discrete time complex variable. Okay.
okay both of these complex variables are two dimensional and they can be represented on an argans diagram okay so z hz this is the definition of z transform this is laplace and both are for laplace is for continuous time hz is for discrete time so uh, we'll come uh, to the z transforms later on but anyways for this case um, since we are talking of lts systems which which are which are being represented by the convolution sum or the convolution integral the idea is that if you apply an exponential signal or a sequence the output will be of the same form as that of that exponential and that exponential is just multiplied by the complex number hfs or hfc depending on which domain you are okay so uh, consequently again in the uh, continuous time case uh, the complex exponentials are again functions of uh, discrete time lts systems so, so as in the continuous time the complex exponential are the eigen functions of discrete time systems and the constant hz or specified value of z is the eigen value with the eigen function z of n right so uh, now now for the analysis of lts system since the system is uh, is linear as well the usefulness of decomposing more general signals in terms of eigen functions can be seen uh, from an example uh, so the example is that we are going to let xt correspond to a linear combination of three exponentials okay so xt you see over here consists of three exponentials with three arbitrary constants uh, a1 a2 and a3 now uh, now if you for, for example if uh, you consider the first term a1 es1 t which is applied to an lti system the response if you can guess that right is uh, since it's an exponential the response will again be an exponential multiplied by a complex multiplying amplitude factor which is a function of the same variable same complex variable as that of uh, the exponential s1 okay so it's a function of s1 and uh, it is scaled by a1 since uh, homogeneity is going to hold for the linear systems so this is the response to the first term to the first to the first term of xt similarly if you apply another input a2 e s2 t independently to the system after the first input is applied and the output will be of the same form as that exponential multiplied by the complex uh, multiplying amplitude factor uh, in terms of s2 uh, multiplied by a scalar a2 right and uh, similarly you can uh, draw the analogy for the third input which is of the same nature exponential the output is again exponential okay multiplied by some complex factors and uh, if you make the xt as a linear combination of uh, <laughs> all three um, exponentials so xt is the linear combination of all these three all uh, three exponentials this is my xt uh, the output is going to be the superposition of all such individual responses so my yt owing to the linearity of the system is going to is going to be the summation of all three responses so it will be a1 hs1 es es1 t and a2 hs2 es2 t a3 hs3 es3 t so this is this is owing to the linearity okay you're just going you're just summing up the individual responses uh, to the each given input signal okay and that 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 owes to the linearity property of lti systems okay so uh, if an if if a signal can be broken up into uh, complex exponentials okay can be decomposed into complex exponentials then uh, if such a input is applied to an lts system the output is should not be hard to see for lts system it should be the summation and uh, it should be of the same form as that of the input but just as a linear combination of all such responses okay so more generally in continuous time together with the superposition property implies that the representation of signals as a linear combination of complex exponentials lead to a convenient expression for the response of lts systems so specifically the input to the continuous time lts system is represented as a linear combination of complex exponentials like this so what we did earlier was we combined these all these exponentials so if you are going to combine combine arbitrary number of such exponentials and you can take a summation over um, uh, some arbitrary index k so the output will be of the same form okay and this uh, eskt is uh, the eigen function of the system okay whereas hsk becomes the eigen value of the lts systems so in an exactly uh, uh, an analogous manner the analogy is that if the input to a discrete time lts system is presented is presented as a linear combination of complex exponentials that is the input is of this form which is a linear combination of the complex exponential scaled by scalars ak then the output will be scaled by the same scalars ak 
and the same input to the ETN, which is the eigenfunctions, multiply by the eigenvalue of the system, which is HCK. Okay. So in other words, for both continuous time and discrete time, if the input to the LDS system is represented as a linear combination of complex exponentials, the output can also be represented as a linear combination of the same exp same complex exponential signals. So each coefficient in this representation of the output is obtained as a product of the corresponding coefficient A of the input and the system eigenvalues. So HS and HZKs are associated with the eigenfunction ESKT, uh, ESKT or DKN respectively. Okay. So Z and uh, okay, your DKN or ESKT, which is the eigen functions over here, the corresponding eigenvalues are HSK and HZK. Okay. All right. Now, uh, so let let's try to understand now uh, how we can use. Uh, Let's, let's drive the Fourier series now, representation of the continuous time periodic signal, and we can do the same for the discrete time periodic signal. So what we're going to do is, we're going to derive xt for xt, uh, which is periodic, can be represented as xt plus t, and smallest t over here is, uh, is the period. If it satisfies, xt is a periodic signal, and we are going to see that how this xt can be decomposed into uh, elementary uh, sinusoidal complex exponentials or sines and cosines. So how xt can be represented uh, by a series consisting of complex exponentials, okay? And that, that would be uh, the Fourier series, okay? So now uh, a signal is periodic if for some positive value of t, uh, the following relationship is satisfied for all t. Then the fundamental period of xt is the minimum positive non-zero value of t, okay? What it means is that, you see, if I write, uh, let's say a number, k, t, then uh, if k is equal to one, then that's the fundamental period. If k is equal to two, then that's the second harmonic because after two t, it's again going to repeat itself. Three t is going to repeat itself. So k is an integer over here. And uh, so we, we always uh, look at the minimum positive and non-zero because the period is a non, uh, non-zero and a positive, it has to be a positive quantity, right? So uh, for which the above equation is satisfied is the period, okay? And uh, the value, omega naught, uh, corresponding value omega naught, two pi by t, is referred to as a fundamental frequency. So the two basic periodic signals were introduced before. Uh, the sinusoidal signal, if you recall, those, those were of the form xt cosine omega naught t omega naught again being fundamental period, and uh, uh, the frequency, sorry, and the periodic complex, and the, the second signal was the periodic complex exponential. So you can see the uh, relationship between the two. The real part of this is uh, the cosine part and then the imaginary part would be sine part. So we are going to, and these, these are again, uh, periodic signals. These are two basic periodic signals that were discussed in chapter one. And if you take the, well, the real part of that, that that's cosine, the imaginary part is sine. So we are going to express xt in terms of, uh, as a series in terms as a series in terms of complex exponentials uh, cosines and sinusoids so a periodic signal in general a special class of uh, signals which are periodic can always be expressed in terms of complex exponentials which are periodic in nature and they can represent any arbitrary periodic signal which is the basis of Fourier series okay so both of these signals uh, are periodic both of the signals are periodic the fundamental period of omega naught and the fundamental period uh, t equal to 2 pi by omega naught. So now associated with the exponential signal is a set of harmonically related complex exponentials. So over, over here you see again you have this um, k where if k is an integer, uh, so 0 to plus k, if k is equal to 0 then this is a DC term, okay, it's a constant term, 1. Uh, then for plus minus 1 means that we are talking of fundamental frequency, okay. Plus one is two. We means uh, it implies second harmonic. So this this uh, two pi by t is omega naught over here. So each of the signals has a fundamental frequency that is a multiple of omega naught, and therefore the each is periodic with period t. Although for k greater than or equal to two, the fundamental period of pi k t is a fraction of t. Okay. So if it becomes greater than two, so for example, this becomes two pi by t, and uh, if k is like two over here then it's twice the frequency or half the period the period becomes half if k becomes three the period becomes uh, t by three okay so for as you are increasing the frequency k is a multiple of frequency over here and uh, you, you're going to make uh, the period of that signal the fraction of uh, the same fraction of the fundamental uh, period okay if the frequency increase three folds then the period has to 
uh, we divide it by three, right? So that's the idea. So the fundamental period of pi kt is a fraction of t. So it's a linear combination of uh, harmonically related complex uh, exponentials of two form. It can be written as such. Okay, so if xt can be, can be expressed in terms of these, these complex exponentials, um, then this represents uh, what is famously known as the Fourier series. Okay, and uh, what what we are intuitively what we are doing over here is that xt if it is periodic if it's periodic that's where we started okay and if uh, capital t exists which is a positive value okay which represents the period if xt is periodic then xt can be decomposed into uh, such exponentials having different weightings ak are the weightings or uh, you can say the amplitudes of uh, the sinusoids okay and k is the harmonic k is the harmonic index so for example for k equal to one means we are talking of the fundamental for k equal to 2, it's a second harmonic, okay, and associated uh, value of a is a2, then it will be a3, ej3 mega naught t, okay. So for each harmonic, we have a different weighting, uh, we have a different scalar, right. So the next t, which is periodic with period t, is, it's also periodic with period t. So in, in, the, in, the, in the above summation, uh, the term for k equal to 0 is a constant term, term for k plus minus 1, both have the fundamental frequency equal to mega naught, and that collectively referred to as fundamental components or the first harmonic components. The two terms for k plus minus 2 are periodic with half the period or equivalently twice the frequency of the fundamental component and, uh, and are referred to as the second harmonic component. So more generally, the components k plus minus n are referred to as the nth harmonic. And again, the period will be uh, t by n, okay? So the representation of the periodic signal in the above form is referred to as the Fourier series representation. So Fourier by Fourier series representation, it's not a transform. Okay, we're still in the time domain. You see, the series is it's a series of complex exponentials which can be broken up, broken up into cosine and sines. But again, we are uh, we are in the time domain. Okay, uh, it's different from the Fourier transforms or Laplace transforms. Uh, it's just it's just an alternate representation of a periodic signal in terms of complex exponentials. Okay, and complex exponential. Uh, can always be broken up into cosine and sine, which are the basic periodic signals, okay, uh, having fundamental periods. And uh, so any any periodic signal uh, can be represented in terms of these basic sines and cosines or equivalently complex exponentials. Okay? So that's the idea of Fourier series. So uh, <clears throat> to understand, um, well, basically this is an expansion, but anyways, to understand the representation of uh, Fourier series of complex uh, not complex, but the periodic signals. Let's let's take an example. This is from your course text. Uh, 3.2 example is 3.2. So it uh, says consider a periodic signal xt uh, with the fundamental period 2 pi by t that is expressed in form of as uh, as a summation in terms of Fourier series. And you're given the uh, Fourier coefficients. Okay, you don't need to evaluate them, but you're given them. Okay, so they're given. A naught is a DC term, which is one. A one is a minus one is uh, one quarter, and then a two is a minus two. Uh, 1 over 2 and a3 is a minus 3. So in general, you can see that a k in general is uh, a of minus k. Okay. And uh, okay. So um, if you rewrite the above summation and collecting each of the harmonic components which have the same fundamental frequency, we obtain. So if if you're going to expand the summation uh, for uh, the first term for k equal to zero is one, which, which, is, which shows up over here. And then for plus minus one, for k minus one and plus one, you're going to have one over four. Then this will be, then k is equal to one, two pi by t or omega naught uh, t. So uh, you can write this so one or four is there. This is for k equal to plus one, this is for k equal to minus one. And uh, then uh, you can go on for k equal to two. Okay, then it will be four pi t minus 4 pi t, and then for 3, it will be 6 pi t, minus 6 pi t, and you combine those, and you, you collect all, all these terms. Um, as a result of that, um, well, as a result of that, if you combine all these, uh, all three um, complex terms, which are, which are factored together, uh, they can be combined into cosines, okay? So you see x of t can be written in terms of cosines having, so this, the first term is the fundamental, fundamental having period t. The second term has uh, the second harmonic having period t by 2, okay, and the third term has the period t by 3, okay, t by 3. So 
again, but you see what, what, what has happened here is that uh, we are representing a periodic signal XT in terms of, first of all, a DC term, and then we have periodic signals. Then we have periodic signals. So the first term ha is having the same fundamental period T. The second term is having the fundamental period that is half of T, okay? But it has a weightage of one. The fundamental period has a weighting of as a weighting of one by two, and the third uh, harmonic, which is the third harmonic having period of t by three, has a weighting of two by three. So all the harmonics have different weightings. Okay, so which which, which are shown over here, they have different weightings. Uh, so product signal, uh, we are just expressing the product signal in terms of uh, harmonics, in terms of its harmonics. And uh, each harmonic is having a different weighting with it. Okay, so that's the idea of Fourier series representation of XT. So XT is an example of alternate form of Fourier series of periodic product signals. So this is what is happening graphically. You see X naught minus one over here. So this is the first term, and then for the second term we have the weighting as one by two. Uh, that's the scaling multiplying factor of uh, period uh, capital T. And then for the second harmonic the weighting is one. Okay, there's no weighting. And for third harmonics, two by third. So let's see. Uh, over here, we have this half multiplying factor. X one t is half cosine two pi t. So if you add x naught to x one t, uh, then this cosine function simply uh, DC shifts uh, on the vertical axis. You should see over here. Basically, it shifts at uh, one. So that's x naught t plus x one t, and this is x naught t, and this is x one t. Then you start adding up the terms uh, to make the representation more and more uh, look like x t. So x2t is the same, this is the second harmonic. You add the second harmonic, this is how the signal looks like. And then you go on adding the third harmonic with the appropriate amplitude factor, which happens to be the Fourier coefficient, two by three for the third harmonic. So add, you add the DC term, you add the first harmonic, second harmonic, third harmonic, along with their uh, weightings. And this is, this is the representation of the signal, okay? Uh, so how good uh, xt, how, good is the match between the exact XT and its Fourier series expansion, which is this one. It depends on, uh, we have to look at uh, the original XT, okay? And if you go on increasing the uh, number of uh, harmonics, the representation becomes better and better, okay? For example, if you look over here, this, this is just the DC term and the first harmonic. So this is something which is not uh, very close to uh, the Fourier, if I just write this as X hat of T, it's not uh, exactly equal to uh, xt over here, okay? Then you add the second harmonic, the shape changes, okay? The waveform changes. You add the third harmonic, it still changes, okay? But somehow you see that the nature of the signal is as such, okay? So you keep on adding the harmonics, probably your signal is going to have a better match, okay? Instead of having a lower number of harmonics. But this example, 3.2, is just showing that how a periodic signal can be decomposed into a complex exponential. And uh, it's just an alternative form of representing uh, or constructing a periodic signal. So the, uh, in this example, we have constructed the signal XT, for example, 3.2, as a linear combination of harmonically related serendipity signals. So uh, specifically, suppose that XT is real, which uh, was in this case. Well, XT you see over here is real, okay? All the uh, XT is real, you see XT is in terms of a DC quantity and cosine functions, harmonic uh, cosine functions. And uh, uh, so if it is real, it can be represented in the form uh, which we have seen before in example 3.2 in terms of complex exponentials. And if it is real, well, its conjugate is the same as xt, right? So we can write xt as we can take the conjugate of both sides. So conjugate is still xt, and then it becomes a k star. Okay, and since uh, e is a comp e is this this is a complex uh, quantity, so it takes uh, minus j over here. Okay, then replacing k by minus k in the summation, we have if you change the summation, there's minus infinity plus infinity. The the limits stay they, they, they stay the same. But then uh, in the subscript, you note that in the Fourier coefficient, it's done minus k, and then uh, again, the positive sign. So if you compare this uh, uh, xt with this xt, okay, uh, this representation, this is both are Fourier series, okay, but uh, we know that xt is real, okay, so we have just take the complex conjugation and replace k by minus k, and if you then compare both the summation, what you see over here is that a k is a star of minus k, okay, so, 
which means the Fourier uh, coefficients are in uh, conjugate symmetry. Okay, and uh, which was indeed also the case in example 3.2. Okay, so if you recall in 3.2, a1 is a minus 1. Okay, and even if you take the star for real uh, signal, then uh, this you can see is the case. This is what is happening. So in general, in general, uh, a star k is a star of minus k. Fourier coefficients are related in complex conjugate symmetric symmetry okay uh, okay so to derive an alternate form of the Fourier series we first rearrange the summation as, as such okay I mean uh, th this is this is the rearrangement of the summation that we have considered before so XT was being represented in terms of complex exponentials this is the Fourier series with the Fourier coefficients AK and uh, you see if uh, well, this is the expansion from minus infinity to plus infinity, but if you expand it from k equal to 1 to plus infinity, then this can be uh, represented as ak. You can uh, separate the positive and negative for your coefficients and the uh, complex exponentials as such. And then you know that ak is um, a minus k, the other the conjugate symmetry. So you can replace this by the same uh, for your coefficients ak, okay, ak and ak star for e minus j k omega naught t and the summation starts with k equal to 1. DC term is out so it doesn't start with k equal to 0 okay and neither is minus infinity plus infinity because from minus for minus infinity we have taken the uh, we have taken this term along with uh, the positive e k k omega naught t so for minus k we can we can just add it up okay now you see that uh, uh, these two terms are, the co are in complex conjugations okay so this term if you take the conjugate of this term, this term, well, this is the result, okay, this is the result. So, you can combine them into a cosine, for example, since the two terms inside the summation are complex conjugates of each other, this can be expressed as uh, the real part of a k e j k omega naught t and two comes over here, because the real part is cosine function. So, <clears throat> but before doing that, if we uh, try to generalize a k in a polar form as uh, so if a k if a k is, happens to be the polar coefficients happen to be complex in nature then they're going to have amplitude and then they're going to have a phase okay so just if you plug this definition uh, over here sorry over here then uh, uh, this thing becomes like this so a k has amplitude of capital a and this theta phase it adds up it adds up over here so then you can write this as a cosine, okay? So this is an alternate form of the Fourier series representation, okay? The summation is starting from k equal to one to infinity. And uh, again, still, uh, uh, there are more alternates. For example, if you write a k in the rectangular form as, I mean, a k is a complex quantity, which we consider over here, okay? A k is a complex quantity, which can be written as, and in terms of a real part, real for real part and imaginary part, and uh, you see, even from here, if you're going to expand cosine as uh, cosine of, uh, for example, if you have cosine a plus b, it can always be written as cosine a cosine b minus sine a uh, sine b, okay? It can be written as cosine of a cosine b. So if you're going to use this trigonometric identity, you still have an alternate representation of Fourier series. Okay, but all these three representations are the same. I mean, the Fourier coefficients are the same. Uh, you will end up having the same uh, the weightings of each harmonics uh, in the Fourier series representation of the periodic signal. Okay, so these are just different representation. Either you can use this, uh, for example, either you can use the complex exponential representation, or you can uh, more in general, if uh, the Fourier coefficient is is of uh, complex nature, is of complex nature. You can write this in polar form, expand the polar form, and you can write this in cosine, okay? Or use the district trigonometric identity to uh, uh, to write this Fourier series in terms of cosines and sines, okay? And basically, this should be a sine instead of uh, cosine. So there's a, there's a problem, anyways. Uh, this 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 correction should be this this is a correction, and this is this should be a sine term. So what what, what is happening is that you can, you can write this as cosine k omega naught t. And then cosine theta k will be absorbed in a k to produce a new coefficient b k, and then you will left you left with sine term. Okay, you can absorb sine b or sine theta k into uh, c k. Okay, c k over here, and then you have then you left with sine k omega naught. So you basically you can expand this. So this is an, this, this is still an alternate uh, form of represent, representation of for your series, right? Um, 
So thus for real periodic functions, the Fourier series in terms of complex exponential is mathematically equivalent to either of the two above summation. So I mean this uh, this is the Fourier series representation of a periodic signal xt. But if ak is complex, you can take either this summation you consider as this summation for representing xt in Fourier series, or you can uh, consider this summation for the representation of Fourier series. Uh, this is representation that are the same, the forms are different, okay. So although the later two are common form of Fourier series, the complex exponential form is particularly convenient for our purposes, so we'll, we'll, we'll just stick to that, okay, that's all.